So what is an IP address? Now we talked about this um, in our group discussions a lot and um, you know we compared IP addresses to other forms of addressing a communication system. So the two examples we often used was the phone system and the postal system. So the phone system has an address which is a phone number and the postal address also has a system which uses zip codes and city names and state names etc. So uh, an IP address is just like that except it only uses numbers and they're arranged in a very specific way. If you can see here there are four numbers ranging from 0 to 255 separated by periods. Okay? And why 255? Why not 999.999.999, etc.? Well, uh, if you remember back uh, when we did our coloring exercises where we had um, two different colored pencils and we tried to make uh, different combinations of colors in eight boxes and during that uh, exercise you guys discovered that the most number of combinations you can make with two different colors in eight boxes was 256 combinations. So for example uh, if you look at these eight boxes here, let's say that you have red, 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 red. That's one combination. Then you go red, 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 green. That's another combination. Okay, now we go red, 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 green, red. That's another combination. So if you do that, you're going to get to 256 combinations before you exhaust all combinations. And why is that important with computers? Well, because computers aren't like people with 10 fingers counting up to 10 and then starting over again. Computers are like a person with just two fingers, okay? You can have one finger up or two fingers up and that's it. So uh, the reason why it's like that is because a computer has these same boxes, but these boxes are basically memory locations where it can say, the memory location has the light bulb on or the memory location has the light bulb off and those are the only two combinations. Okay, It's too hard to, for it to make different degrees of light bulbs turning on or off so it just makes off or on. Okay, And since that's the way a memory location for a computer is with only two possible possibilities it makes numbers that way just turning the memory location on or off. And so with eight memory locations a computer can make 256 different numbers and then if you take uh, 32 memory locations like we see here, it can make 4.3 billion combinations. So if you have 32 little boxes here and you can fill them in with a lit light bulb or a turned off light bulb, you can basically have 4.3 billion different numbers represented here. Okay, so with the IP version 4, which is the current version of uh, IP, um, you can address 4.3 billion different computers. Now, is that enough? Well, we're going to see. Well, what kind of devices need an IP address? Well, obviously, your computer, your iPhone, uh, all the things that use Wi-Fi, like uh, iPods, iPads, tablets, um, some of your video game consoles connect to the Internet, um, TVs now, okay? What devices don't use the internet? Well, you know, even now there's many cell phones that do not use the internet. They're not smartphones, they just make phone calls. Those don't use an IP address. Computers at home that for some reason are not connected to the internet, uh, believe it or not, 10 years ago most computers were not connected to the internet. Um, those kind of computers do not need IP addresses also, even though they're computers. Okay, do we have enough IP addresses with IP version 4? Well, the population of the world is 7 billion and we can have 4.3 billion different addresses for computers. Well, uh, as you worked in your groups, you kind of calculated how many different internet devices there are and most of you guys were figuring out that there's probably on the order of, you know, more than a billion, maybe 10 billion devices. Okay, so we're talking about 4.3 billion different addresses, maybe 10 billion devices based on a 7 billion population. 
Is that enough? Well, in 2012, Europe ran out of IP version for internet addresses. And why is it that that wasn't a bigger deal than it was? Because for years and years and years, they were already working to avoid this problem. They knew that there was going to be an eventual exhaustion of IP addresses, so they have been using different tricks to uh, avoid exhausting the IP addresses. And the, the most obvious one is they, they made a new version of internet protocol addressing called IP version 6. And you remember how IP version 4 has 32 boxes um, of memory locations that can be turned on or off, and that's 4.3 billion different addresses. Well, IP version 6 has 128 of those boxes. So they made it four times as wide as the IP version 4 address. And so that's obviously a huge number of addresses. It's 3.4 times 10 to the 38th um, addresses. So three with 38 zeros. Okay, so it's pretty hard to imagine ever exhausting IP version 6, but you know, we don't know where technology is going to take us. Um, the other two ways that um, we have avoided exhausting IP addresses is dynamic assignment, which means that when you use the IP address, when you turn on, you get one, and when you stop using it, you give it back. Um, next time you turn on, you're going to get a different one, whatever is available, and then you use it, and then you give it back. So that is also a way of saving IP addresses, not keeping IP addresses even when you're off or when you're not working. Okay. So, and then finally, there's network address translation, which is kind of complicated, so we'll talk about that later. Okay, and uh, in class, we also worked on an activity where you guys talked about different ways of getting IP addresses. And um, so everyone kind of made a theory, and some of the theories that you made were uh, the IP address is assigned at a factory and uh, the factory programs that IP address into the CPU of the computer and the computer gets shipped somewhere and then that, uh, that computer can be used um, in any part of the world. And, and then another theory was that the computer picks one itself and then um, if it happens to pick one that's already used it, it tries again. Another one is that um, when you subscribe to an internet service, you get an IP address. And the last one is that when you turn on or connect to the internet, then you get an IP address from somebody. Okay. So let's talk about um, maybe problems with each one of those theories. And all those theories are valid theories, but um, all of them have difficulties. And because of that, what happens is some of those theories are used and some of them are not used um, at one point in time. Okay, so uh, depending on the conditions, the theory is used. Okay, so the first one that the factory assigns addresses and then ships them out to the world. Okay, um, when you have uh, many different computers. Uh, being shipped out to different parts of the world with addresses assigned by the same factory, you can see that even though the factory numbers them uh, consecutively, once it sends them out to the world, they're no longer neighbors anymore. So you, then you have like consecutive numbers on different continents, and that makes it really hard for the internet mailman to deliver messages because as you can see two different addresses which are very similar to each other are not next to each other so how do you deliver mail that way okay so that's a problem with this scenario uh, what about the scenario where the computer picks the address for himself well if he picks the address for himself there's a danger that he might pick an address that's already used by another okay um, now what about uh, when uh, a different address is assigned every time the device is turned on? Well, there's some devices like printers which need to be found at the same address every day, otherwise um, you can't print anymore. So like in this scenario here, you have a computer who can't find the printer because it changed its address today um, compared to yesterday. 
Okay, and then there is the, um, you sign up for internet and the internet provider gives you an IP address. Now, usually in your home you have many different devices who want to access the internet and if you have um, just one address assigned to your whole house then who is going to use that address? Everybody's going to want to use the address. Okay, so now I'm going to try to explain under what conditions each one of these scenarios is used because each one of these scenarios is valid given the right um, given the right uh, conditions. So th when the factory assigns an address, it doesn't assign an address, it does assign an address for every single internet device it makes. But the address is not an IP address, it's a MAC address. Okay? And this MAC address has nothing to do with Macintosh, it just has the same uh, abbreviation. But this address is used, but it is only used inside of a local area network called a LAN. Okay? And um, so what is a LAN? A LAN is like a small network that is about as big as your house or maybe as big as a campus or as big as a company. Okay? So like any network that is, you know, owned by one group can be a local area network. And within that local area network, when the computers talk to each other, they will use the MAC address, which even though you got computers manufactured by a different, bunch of different companies, and they have like numbers ranging from, you know, one to a trillion, they can easily find each other because it's just a small group of computers. Okay, so that's when you use MAC addresses. When you're in a small network, everybody's talking to each other, they're all broadcasting messages to each other, everybody's looking at each message to see if it's theirs, then you can use a MAC address. Okay? When the message goes outside of that local area network, then you cannot use a MAC address anymore because then it would just be too crazy for the mailman to try to deliver using the system where, you know, two neighboring addresses are on different continents. Okay? All right, when a computer picks an address for himself, a person manually programs an address on each computer. And um, this was like a long time ago when people did this. Okay, so what, what, uh, when we had like six computers at a university, then there was like a technician who assigned the addresses for each computer. And then um, there wasn't really too much danger of uh, one using the same as the other because he carefully assigned those addresses and programmed them. And there was no mobility, there was no cell phones, smartphones, uh, so it was pretty easy to, um, to keep them straight. Okay? And then uh, what about the scenario where you have like printers and web servers which need to be found by other computers, you can't change their address every day. Well, in this case, you make an exception. So like web servers and printers that need to be found by other computers, they get the same address every day while the others are being assigned different addresses every day. What about the scenario where the home uh, signs up for an internet and there's only one address for all the devices in the house. Well in this case what happens is the router which is at the gateway of the house is the one who gets the IP address and everyone behind him, the devices, they uh, use a system called network address translation which we'll talk about later. Okay so the address goes to the gateway and everybody else uses uh, the NAT system, the NAT system to communicate through the router. Okay, and we're just about out of time in this one, so we'll start part two.